Hey guys, well, greetings from the country where my day starts most days. I'm out here and just taking in the view a little bit before we go in and start our day. I was gonna, I'm gonna run into DC later this afternoon, but I got a few things I need to take care of out here in the country first, like getting my car inspected. And I thought I'd show you some cool stuff uh, down the river. Uh, from here. Hey guys, uh, it is Thursday and it's really cold. It's really it's like in the 40s or 50 degrees. There's nothing on the schedule of any interest and I have to take my car to get an inspection. So I thought, why don't we do a little video I've been wanting to do about Doomsday. <laughs> World War III guys, that's the subject of today's video. And I'm going to show you a couple little things about World War III here in the Washington, D.C. area. He'll be cool. Let's see, 32 coming out of Andrews. I'm not sure who. So guys, right across that red light, that is the entrance to Joint Base Andrews. There's the sign. It used to be known as Andrews Air Force Base, but now it's a joint base because there's a Navy and Air Force. There's the entrance. And this is, of course, where Air Force One is kept. This is where the alert fighters for Washington, D.C. are maintained in case they need to scramble. And there's a lot of cargo planes here as well. At one time, though, there was a plane known as NECAP based here at Andrews Air Force Base. NECAP, the National Emergency Command Airborne Platform, is a 747 specially modified for the purpose of fighting World War III. Now, NECAP was based here, but they eventually moved it to Offutt Air Force Base in Omaha because they thought that would be more survivable than basing it here at Andrews. They kept one of the aircraft here on alert status, or they kept one on alert status somewhere in the world. But then, in about 1994, Clinton decided, ah, you know what, we don't really need an alert status NECAP anymore. So they dropped, uh, they dropped it, and now NECAP is only kind of a every now and then kind of visitor to Andrews Air Force Base. When the president is going overseas, uh, NECAP will come here and follow Air Force One overseas with the president. And occasionally we see NECAP making uh, visits to Washington, D.C., but it's not something we see regularly anymore. So in the 1980s, when the new uh, Air Force One came on service, the Air Force One that you currently see, uh, the need for NECAP really went downhill. The new Air Force One was better equipped hardened for electromagnetic attacks, uh, had a lot more communications than the old Air Force One. So kneecaps usage, well, it kind of fell apart and it just didn't really need it as much. There's talk of doing away with kneecap, but uh, it's still in the budget and well, we'll see. If so a lot of you ask, where do I get my pizzas? Well, this is a place called Mod Pizza. It's a chain. It's common around here. I think it's actually common nationwide. And well, this is the pizza I get a lot. Uh, mild sausage and ham. Yeah, I know. But... <laughs> Commission's testing station. Okay. Now to figure out how this actually works. Well, that took like five minutes. <laughs> Car has passed inspection. Woo! Car is good for another couple of years. All right, let's get on with what we really want to do today, and that's look at planes, yeah? Let's go look at airplanes. There is the bridge over the Patuxent River. Oh, there's a Johnson Bridge. I can't remember that. And that connects uh, Patuxent River. That connects the Navy base with this uh, county. And over here, this is Solomon's Island. And this is a nice little island uh, between the bay and the river with a, with a little boardwalk and some shops and whatnot. Let's just spin through Solomon's Island for a bit. Walk. 
the place with the pink sign, that is the Tiki Bar. The Tiki Bar here on Solomon's Island, and it is a legendary place in the summertime. It only opens in the summertime. The opening event is a huge concert. They have thousands of people here for the weekend opening of the Tiki Bar. It actually requires like police and riot teams to come out here, it's so crazy. So the University of Maryland actually has a research facility down here. This is an environmental uh, research lab run by the University of Maryland and the state of Maryland for marine research. It's kind of cool. They have a boat they bring out down here too sometimes. And they go out into the bay and do research on crabs and oysters and dolphins even. University of Maryland Center for Environmental Science, Chesapeake Biological Laboratory. So guys, I wanted to come out here. This is a statue called On Watch, and it is a memorial to the U.S. Navy's amphibious training base, which was located here on the Solomon Islands. Now, the sculptor of this was Antonio Tobias Mendez, and I've mentioned him before because he did a lot of sculptures in this area. Antonio Tobias Mendez is a well-accomplished artist, but you may know his father, Tony Mendez because Tony Mendez was the CIA officer who got the hostages out of Iran in the Canadian caper, made famous by the movie Argo. He was played by Ben Affleck in the movie. Anyway, his son is an accomplished sculptor and made this statue for the amphibious training base that used to be located here. So while you may never have heard of Solomon Island uh, amphibious training base, let me tell you one guy who had heard about it, Adolf Hitler. You see, the invasion of Normandy started here in Maryland. Just around the corner there at Cove Point and Drum Point, the amphibious sailors and the Marines and the, sail or the Army, they practiced over and over and over again the amphibious landings that would become the Normandy D-Day invasion. That all started here at the amphibious training base in Solomon's Island. This is a YP, yard patrol boat, the YP-685. It was government surplus and sold to a private buyer. But this is what the U.S. Naval Academy guys used to train on. These YP boats are very common up in Annapolis, Maryland at the U.S. Naval Academy. So uh, somebody saw one and saw it was on auction and picked it up for himself, I guess. So guys, you can see that big hangar right over there on the other side of the Patuxent River. That is Patuxent River Naval Air Station. That is the U.S. Navy's test pilot school. That's where all the experimental planes are brought for the Navy to try them out and test them. Now, Pax River is also the home of a doomsday plane, the Takamo, T-A-C-A-M-O. And that stands for Take Charge and Move Out specially modified to take charge and move out. Launching the missiles, sending the signals to the subs and the other missile bases in the event of a nuclear war. Now the main TACMO base is at Tinker Air Force Base in Oklahoma, but they have a forward operating base here at Patuxent River and another forward operating base out in California. So we do see the E-6 TACMO, fl TACMO flights come out of this area every now and then. You can see them in and out of Pax River. I'll tell you what, we're gonna go over the bridge into Lexington Park, which is the uh, home of Patuxent River. Lexington Park is named after the USS Lexington, by the way. And uh, let's go see what we can see at the base because they got some pretty cool planes. Hope you guys don't get afraid of heights because this bridge is like a hundred some feet up. <laughs> Unfortunately, every now and then they have a jumper. And as it's only two lanes, when somebody stops their car to get out and jump, well, it's kind of a traffic nightmare. Alrighty, now we're at the top. That's where we're going. Because they've got cool stuff. Out in the back, take a look at that parking lot. Yep, I'm going over there. The base is pretty huge, but down here is the really cool stuff. They have this uh, platform over there where they have an inverted fighter jet. See, that looks like an F-18, and it's upside down on top of that platform, so they can test the radar profile of, like, missiles and bombs on the bottom of the F-18. There it is, a little bit closer view, the upside-down fighter jet. <laughs> so cool. So one good thing about Southern Maryland, it's a little bit closer to real America than D.C. 
and that means Dairy Queen. Woohoo, Dilly Bars! Hey, can I get um, a Dilly Bar and an ice cream sandwich? Sometimes it's kind of hard to think that I'm actually an adult. So this is a replica of an old uh, seaplane, the first airplane of the U.S. Navy, 1911, the Curtis A-1 Triad. And then over here is a more recent addition. This is a fire scout. This is a drone. Flies off Navy ships and helps does spotting. And that is a Sea King. That is basically, is that Marine One? Well, not Marine One, of course, but that's the same helicopter. So in 1944 at Pax River was the Joint Fighter Conference where the British Army, the US, the Canadians all met together with industry with 23 different aircraft from the UK, German and Japanese fighters and they did a big fly-off. They tested all these different planes against one another. If you, for example, that's an F4U Corsair. That looks like a Hawker Hurricane or Spitfire. That's some sort of German aircraft. It looks like a Yak. There's a P-51. Those are P-47s. Is that P-38? So yeah, they had all these different aircraft down here. And oh, they've captured Japanese Zero with American markings. Cool. Takamo, T-A-C-A-M-O, and there is an E-6 Takamo plane. I was mentioning this, this is the war flighter. So yeah, the headquarters was moved to Tinker in 92, but there's still operational missions from Pax River. And View Key 4, which is attachment, a detachment of the uh, E-6 was it squadron, they're linked back here. There's the old Takabo. It was a C-130. Yes, guys, that is an F-35. However, if you look at the tail closely, it actually says X-35. That was the fly-off test version of the F-35 that they tested down here at Pax River before they went into construction of the F-35 program. Pretty cool. This is a T-38, if I'm not mistaken. This is kind of the thing we see doing the flyovers at uh, Arlington Cemetery all the time. It's a trainer. In fact, I just saw a T-38 go up a few minutes ago. So you can see on the back there, it says U.S. Naval Test Pilot School. It's one of the aircraft they use for test pilots. Check this out, a captured MiG-21 cockpit. So this is a MiG-21 cockpit. I guess they did some research here into uh, foreign aircraft. How did they get a MiG-21? Well, the U.S. borrowed this MiG-21 from the Israeli government that they acquired during the Six-Day War. <laughs> anyway, the U.S. studied the MiG-21 at Area 51 Groom Lake, and they would learn different things about it, and that helped them in the Vietnam War. Hmm, cool. Okay. Let's go out to the flight line. <laughs> When approaching the aircraft, look out for birds and bees that may be hiding in the aircraft. I don't need you to tell you what that is. Yeah, that's an F-18 of the Blue Angels. They come down here every now and then, but usually they go up to Annapolis. There used to be an air show down here. And guys, down here, well, this is the flight line. And this flight line has got all sorts of goodies, including aircraft that never made it into production, like this, the X-32, which was part of the fly-off for the X-35 project. This was from Boeing. So this was the Boeing X-32 project. It was a demonstrator. It could actually hover in flight, but uh, they went with the F-35. This is the only X-32 I think that was ever built. You can see down into the engine there. Looks like a giant fish. <laughs> they're restoring it right now. It's kind of beat up. That's why they're kind of got the sandblasting and repainting it and all that stuff. Oh, look at that. Wow, there's a V-22 Osprey here. That's new. The Navy is considering the V-22. In fact, there's a test V-22 that makes its way around 
outside of here. I, I saw it up on the uh, trackers earlier today. Look how big these props are, guys. The V22 props, that's a loud and down thrust. You guys ask me why the V22 doesn't land at the White House? Because these props would just blow the trees over, basically. Oh, there's a Harrier, guys. Cool, look how small the Harrier is compared to its big brother, the V22. Both in vertical flight. Now you'll notice most, this is the first Harrier that was built together with the US and the UK. This is not the original British Harrier. So this is AV-8B Harrier II, slightly different from the British Harriers. You'll notice as we go through here, a lot of the fighters and a lot of the aircraft have the orange tails uh, and the orange winglets. And this is from the uh, testing protocols they used here. In fact, most of the, some of the aircraft are entirely orange. Over there, there's a Huey. And is that a Falcon? I can't remember what that one is. This is a Jolly Green Giant. I've actually flown on one of these. These things are huge. We don't have these anymore. They got replaced by the V-22s. I don't think we have these anymore. Sikorsky CH-53 Sea Stallion. That's a heavy lift helicopter. Now this aircraft is being replaced by the V-22. This is a Greyhound C-2 carrier onboard delivery. Not sure. Okay. What's over here? Hawkeye, right? Yeah, it's an E2 Hawkeye. Oh, cool, they got an E6. They really need to get a big hangar because the weather is really taking a toll on these aircraft. As they sit out here forever. And they got an aircraft back in the grass even. Oh, I don't even remember what this is. Voodoo? No, Vigilante. The RA-5C Vigilante. It's a carrier-based bomber designed to carry your nuclear weapons. Cool. A Viking. This is an anti-sub aircraft. And back there we've got an a6, Flight of the Intruder, and I think that's, is that an A7? That's a Skyhook, is that A4, right? Let's go check it out. It's been a long time since I've seen these planes. This is an A4, well, NA4M Skyhawk, and that's an A7 Corsair, and over here is the A6 Intruder, Flight of the Intruder. Again, you guys can notice they all have the orange painting, that is, I think it's the test flight. So they really got like a sunken submarine on the tail there for the sub hunter. Cool. I thought so. I thought it was a little off. So this is the S3 Viking anti-submarine aircraft. This aircraft was the first aircraft ever to be called Navy One. Not this specific airplane, but the S3 Viking. George Bush flew an S3 Viking out to the aircraft carrier after the uh, Gulf War. The and. That took the call sign of Navy One. For the first time in history, there was a Navy One. There's Marine One, Army One, Air Force One, of course, but the first time a Navy One was George Bush. There's never been a Coast Guard One. Those are old planes over there. There's an F-4. Let's go take a look at that. This is an F-9 Cougar from the Korean War. And I think this is the follow-on to the Panther, which was a big plane in the Korean War. And this, of course, is an F-4. This was a very common aircraft throughout my youth. I think they just did away with the last F-4s about 15, 20 years ago. They used them as wild weasels, which were air defense suppression. Yep, F-4 Phantom. This, however, is the F-14 of Top Gun fame. Again, with the uh, Navy test flight colors on it. But look how big these planes are. This is the thing you don't really get when you watch like Top Gun or something like that, or even when you look at it next to the F-18, which is the new Top Gun 2. Tom Cruise would be flying the F-18. But look at the size difference. There's the F-18, that's gotta be an A model. 
and this is the F-14. Just humongous aircraft. Yeah, because there's a new version of the F-18 that's much bigger. F-18 Hornet. Yeah, this is the A version. There's a bigger version of the F-18 now, but this F-14 is just so much, so much more of an aircraft than this one. Nice. This is a CH-46. I've been on one of these, too. These were another medium-lift helicopter used by the Navy and the Marines, replaced by the V-22. Here's some more little test planes. What's this thing? Sabre Liner, T-39. These look like trainers. This is a newer trainer, the Beechcraft. Raytheon Texan. Yeah, this one's in service right now. The Texan is currently being used as a trainer. And what do we have over here? There's a pump. <laughs> T-2C Buckeye, another trainer. And then, of course, a Huey. What is an old one? Bell Iroquois. This was served in 1970 to 1983. It's actually a ground test unit. And another trainer. Pretty nifty, guys, yeah? That's right, this place has the models. This is an escort carrier, cheap carrier. And then they have a bigger carrier over here. The Hancock, yeah. This was a Korean War carrier. Still a straight deck, not a, not an angled flight deck carrier. Well, those Panthers. Sky Warrior Cougar, we saw a Cougar outside. Demon. No, they're not Panthers. Back here is engines and drones. There's an X-47 drone over here. I think this was a demonstrator. Pegasus combat vehicle, 2003 to 2006. And then this was a Coast Guard drone. Sort of like a tilt rotor drone. There's, that's off the battleships. They used to fly those off battleships as spotters. And that, that's old. Anti-submarine drone. 1960 to 2006. Then back here they have like the most awesome model airplane collection in history. <laughs> Look at this. The Battle of Midway in model ships. That, right there, guys, that was the difference at Midway. 300 nautical miles between the surface combatants and the carriers. Had those surface combatants been there to protect the carriers, Midway would have gone drastically differently. But they screwed up. The surface combatants left a day later than the airstrike group. Oh well, that's history, guys. <sighs> Look at all these model airplanes. When I was a kid, this would have been just like heaven. And as a big kid, this is pretty cool. <laughs> I'd love to have all these planes. So that's the helmet they used during World War II. The pilots wore those goggles and that helmet. And this is the V-22 concept helmet <laughs> that was proposed for pilots of the V-22 with night vision and other sorts of cool functionality. Guys, that's the Pax River Naval Air Museum, Naval Test Center Museum. It's pretty cool. Cost about nine bucks to get in, but heck, it's worth it just to see all these cool planes. Down in Lexington Park, about an hour and a half from Washington, D.C. But now it's time for me to make my way back to Washington, D.C. Let's see what kind of food we can find on the way, though. Okay, so guys, it's four o'clock right now. We've been talking about E4s and E6s. I didn't expect to see one today, but right now there is an E-4, uh, the kneecap plane, inbound on its way to Andrews Air Force Base. The problem is I'm about 30 to 45 minutes from Andrews, and he's probably 10 minutes flight time from Andrews. 
I don't think I'm going to see him unless he does touch and goes. Anyway, we're going to keep scanning the skies. He's at 15,000 feet and he's about 30 miles out from where I'm at right now. If I see him, I'm going to pull over and we're going to try to get a photo of him. But uh, I don't know. We'll see. It could be cool if we see him. All right, flight deviation. It looks like he's not going to Andrews. It looks like he's going to Pax River. I'm only about five or 10 minutes away from Pax River. I can't get back up there, but I can get to Solomon's Island and get my camera set up. Hopefully we can catch him landing. That might be him. Just can't get any bigger though. Oh, this guy is killing me. He just changed course again. Now he looks like he's took, he's took like like swervy way into Andrews. Ugh, I might be able to see him over there. He's about 10, 15 miles away. Uh, I'm going to pull out the big lens and we'll try to get a shot of him. Ugh. So the E4 kneecap plane landed at Andrews about an hour ago. It took me a while to get up here. Um, there's a chance it's on the runway apron uh, or the tarmac or the taxiway. We're going to go around. There's only one way to see that area and you only get to see it for a few seconds. If it's there, we'll see it. Okay, guys, I made it to Andrews. I made it to the one spot where you can see what's on the tarmac. And yes, the E4 is on the runway. But could I film it? No, because you have only a fraction of a second while driving at 55 miles an hour. And it's just basically impossible to film. Not only that, it might actually be illegal to film what's on the runway without permission of the base commander. So I couldn't get you a video, but trust me, the E4 is there. You look at the ADSB trackers, you'll see that it's there. Anyway, this was a fun day, guys. I hope you enjoyed this uh, walk around into Southern Maryland. Tomorrow we'll be back around Washington, D.C. Uh, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.